In addition to these shocking revelations, Businge criticized the UK government's policy of deporting asylum seekers to Rwanda as absolutely wrong and immoral due to its lack of a long-term vision. He argued that a comprehensive policy should prevent people from risking their lives to reach the UK. Furthermore, Businge condemned the UK's self-image as a compassionate and protective nation, referring to historical injustices such as slavery and colonialism. He stated, It is immoral for the UK to still regard itself as a solace country. The protection country, the compassion country. They enslaved millions of people for 400 years. They destroyed India. They destroyed China. They destroyed Africa. Let me ask you this. What do you think of the home ministry here? What do you think of the home ministry here? Government. I think you want me to tell you anything? Yes. You won't tell it to anybody? No. <laughs> <laughs> And it still has a moral for these countries to still see themselves as the, as the refuge country, the solace country, the protection country, the compassion country. They enslaved millions of people for 400 years. They destroyed India. They destroyed China. Yes. So, they destroyed Africa. So, compassion is politics. I sit here and I watch it. Compassion in this country is politics. There's no compassion here. And the LGBTQ mm. drama. Yes. Why are we dramatizing? What are we doing with that? Yes. Yes. Why are we dramatizing? Mm. Beyond. There's now a bigger problem, bigger than COVID, bigger than underdevelopment. Yes. Why? Yes. Why? Yes, if there could be, if there are scientifically people who are like that, yes. it's, it's not fueled. It's not fueled by, by here. The debate right now is bizarre. Mm. Uh, we hear the they go to schools of young children, to serve until under age classrooms, under age classes, 10, 13, 12 years mm. old, and they are busy telling them how this whole male and female gender is a lie. Yes. It doesn't exist. You can be anything. Also defining those rights and uh, trying to be sure that the rights you are, you are talking about are not LGBTQ, you know, drama. Let's keep in touch. Okay, wonderful. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. So, well, there is an incident in 2012 where the police shot 10 refugees. Yes, it might have happened. But so what? Here in the UK, someone is shot every day. And it is on, on BBC and it is everywhere. But they haven't said the UK shoots people. In March, Rusesa Begina was released from prison after President Kagame pardoned him and he flew back to the US. The ambassador showed no regret about how Rusesa Begina was captured and even suggested the regime would do it again. But what's to keep him from doing this again with the... Pardon me? With full credibility. Like with the re to, to get another rebel army or... Can you do it again? Or well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, don't maybe who, but his plane would again land in <laughs> 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 Kagame's High Commissioner to the UK, Johnson Businge faces public outcry following revelations of Rwandan police's role in refugee killings. In a shocking turn of events, the Rwandan High Commissioner to the UK, Johnston Businge, found himself at the center of a growing controversy after an undercover investigation by the British activist group led by Donkeys. This inquiry delved into the UK government's controversial program of forcibly relocating asylum seekers to Rwanda. What transpired was a covert operation that would rock diplomatic relations between the two nations. Led by donkeys, known for their audacious campaigns and investigative journalism, set up an elaborate ruse involving a fictitious Asian investment firm purportedly interested in Rwanda's business opportunity. With assistance from Chelgay, a London-based PR company known for its ties to General Paul Kagame's administration, the fake Asian company secured a meeting with Johnston Businge. During this covert meeting, the shocking revelations began to unravel. Businge, believing he was meeting with an eager Asian businessman, candidly admitted to the involvement of Rwandan security forces in the killing of refugees. The entire exchange was captured on film, creating a political earthquake. Businge's admissions included the acknowledgement that in 2018, 
Quandon police had killed and wounded refugees protesting against cuts to food rations. When confronted with these grave events, Busingair responded callously, stating, Well, there is an incident where the Rwandan police shot 10 refugees. Yes, it might have happened, but so what? Here in the UK, someone is shot every day, and it is on BBC and everywhere. In addition to these shocking revelations, Busingaya criticized the UK government's policy of deporting asylum seekers to Rwanda as absolutely wrong and immoral due to its lack of a long-term vision. He argued that a comprehensive policy should prevent people from risking their lives to reach the UK. Furthermore, Busingaya condemned the UK's self-image as a compassionate and protective nation, referring to historical injustices such as slavery and colonialism. He stated, It is immoral for the UK to still regard itself as a solace country. The protection country, the compassion country. They enslaved millions of people for 400 years. They destroyed India. They destroyed China. They destroyed Africa. Amidst this scandal, Chelgate, the London-based PR agency, was implicated in advising on managing the international condemnation of the Rwandan government's detention of Paul Rusis Abagina, further complicating the situation. This shocking revelation, thanks to the efforts of led by donkeys and journalist Antony Barnett, has cast a glaring spotlight on Rwanda's human rights record and ignited a wave of international condemnation. As the fallout continues, General Paul Kagame faces a severe diplomatic and political challenge, with questions about his government's actions and transparency now thrust into the global arena. We're parked in a van just behind one of Britain's most exclusive gentlemen's clubs. And in a few minutes' time, there's going to be a lunch with the Rwandan ambassador to the United Kingdom, the chairman and founder of an international public relations firm that's worked with the Rwandan government and a Malaysian businessman. And how do we know that? Well, the Malaysian businessman is actually one of our undercover reporters. For the past three months, Led by Donkeys has been investigating the government's plan to forcibly send asylum seekers to Rwanda, a cornerstone of the Prime Minister's Stop the Boats policy and a dream of the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman. I would love to be having a, a front page of the Telegraph yeah. with a, fly, a plane taking off to Rwanda. That's my dream. That's my dream. It's when my will obsession. that happen? Suwada Braverman has described Rwanda as one of the safest countries in the world. Rwanda is one of the world's fastest growing economies, one of the world's safest countries, and has a proud track record of hosting and integrating refugees. But our investigation will hear from a man who's helped run Rwanda's international public relations efforts, admitting that critics of the Rwandan president Paul Kagame are locked up, how other Rwandans have disappeared and how the regime kidnapped a leading opposition figure. There are worse kidnaps. It was quite an entertaining kidnap. We see the country's former justice minister, now Rwanda's high commissioner in London, dismiss an incident where several refugees in Rwanda were shot dead by police. There is an incident in 2012 where the police shot 10 refugees. Yes, it might have happened, but so what? We learn the ambassador is actually a critic of Britain's whole migrant policy. What would you say to the, I would say that to the prime minister or to the home minister? What would you say to I them? I tell them that they are doing it absolutely wrong. They do get up. They should have a long term idea. And we hear the ambassador denounce what he calls the LGBTQ drama in the UK and says he doesn't want to import it into Rwanda. Also defining those rights and, and trying to be sure that the rights you are, you are talking about are not LGBTQ, you know, drama. I'm Anthony Barnett, an investigative journalist who's been working with Led by Donkeys to examine the government's Rwanda plan. In June, we set up a fake Southeast Asian business and approached the British public relations firm Chelgate, who we knew had been working with the Rwandan regime. We emailed Chelgate and said we were interested in investing in Rwanda and wanted to appoint an advisor who was well connected and knew the East African country. We said we liked the pro-business environment in Rwanda. It didn't take long for Chelgate's executive chairman, Terence Fane Saunders, to reply. You're quite correct in understanding that Chelgate do have significant knowledge and experience relating to Rwanda, with our network of contacts including some of the President's most senior advisers. A Zoom call was arranged for the following week. Supporters of the plan to deport refugees to Rwanda claim the scheme is vital to stop criminal gangs profiting from human trafficking and getting refugees to risk their lives crossing the channel. 
Instead, they say they will be sent to a safe country where they'll be welcomed. Critics claim it is cruel, costly and unethical to forcibly send asylum seekers against their will to a country that has a questionable human rights record. We wanted to try and discover what those with the inside track on Rwanda really thought. <laughs> it's very good meeting you and it's, it's uh, uh, are you, where are you calling from, KL or...? Chilgate chairman Terence Fane Saunders told us he did a lot of work for the Rwandan regime. We've helped the Rwandan government with a lot of difficult situations. They're one of the few, they're one of the few countries which it became a public a, a awareness that we were working for them. Fane Saunders told us he'd worked for Shell when it faced hostile media after the execution of environmentalist and writer Ken Sarawiwa, who was protesting against the ecological damage caused by oil extraction in Nigeria. Fane Saunders told us that in Rwanda, Chelgate has worked with President Kagame's official spokesperson and given media training to a lot of the regime's senior ministers and ambassadors. And he told us how Chelgate helped to organise a trip to Rwanda for British journalists, a trip Fane Saunders admitted wasn't open to everybody. I mean, we haven't organised a trip for any hostile critics out to Rwanda because we thought that might be playing into their hands. They would just be digging for negative stuff. So the people who've gone out have tended to be either enthusiasts or people who are open-minded. Um, Fane Saunders praised Rwanda for being one of the safest countries in Africa, where bribery was not an issue, but he admitted it still had its problems. You know, we, we coined a phrase, Rwanda works, mm. and it does. Mm. It's totally different to other parts of Africa from that point of view. So I'm, I'm a big fan of, uh, of Rwanda in many ways. Yes, it's, it's not quite a dictatorship, but it's run with a very strong central government. I mean, Kagame is, so again, a bit like the early days, I suppose, of, of, of Singapore. And um, mm. the Iguanyu the was, was very tough. And similarly... Kagame, if he thinks, he encourages opposition. There are opposition members of parliament and so on. But if he thinks that somebody's trying to undermine it, yes, he is, and his people are rough, because they are very on them. Even though Fane Saunders has helped Rwanda promote a positive image, in private, he admits a more brutal reality exists, including disappearances and kidnappings. They are criticised by Human Rights Watch and, and Amnesty International and so on. Uh, there are Things happen in Rwanda which, bluntly, are not good sometimes. Um, things happen, people have disappeared, uh, who have been captured. People who are critics can be locked up. He will, he will take criticism, but if he feels this criticism is going to damage or undermine or is, is malicious, or whatever, they do get locked up and they get released after a while. But, uh, and Amnesty International will criticise them. In 2021, Chelgate became embroiled in a major international controversy when the Rwandan government was accused of unlawfully abducting Paul Rusisa Begina, the man portrayed as a hero in the film Hotel Rwanda, who saved more than 1,000 lives in the 1994 genocidal war. After the war, Rusesa Begina became a human rights activist and a critic of President Kagame's government. He became a Belgian citizen and moved to the US in 2005. In August 2020, Rusesa Begina was in Dubai and he boarded a flight that he believed was going to Burundi. But according to Fane Saunders, Rwandan intelligence arranged for the plane to stop in Kigali, the Rwandan capital, where Rusisa Begina was arrested on charges of terrorism and after a trial jailed for 25 years. During the international storm caused by Rusesa Begina's arrest, Fane Saunders helped coach Rwandan's then Justice Minister Johnston Basingi on how to deal with the media. In our Zoom call, Fane Saunders said Rusesa Begina was on his way to meet with a rebel group when he was abducted. He thought he had chartered a plane. Well, he had chartered a plane, but the Rwandan intelligence services heard that he chartered this plane out to meet with this guerrilla group. And they arranged with a plane that he should stop over in Kigali on the way to where he was going. And, and he came out of the plane. He didn't quite realise where he was. So they said, welcome back to Kigali. Um, could you come this way, please? It was quite funny with the definition of kidnap. I mean, I think probably technically it was a kidnap. The, the Rwandans deny this kidnap. They say, well, he got off the plane. But yes, they did arrange that plane would stop in Rwanda and he hadn't realised yet. I mean, 
there are worse kidnaps. It was quite an entertaining kidnap. In March 2022, the UN Working Group on Arbitrary Detention reported that Rusesa Begina had been illegally detained and sentenced after an unfair trial. They said Rusesa Begina had been allegedly tortured and was targeted by the Rwandan regime because he was a human rights defender and for his criticism of the government on a broad range of human rights issues. Our undercover reporter told Fane Saunders he was worried that the UK's plans to deport refugees to Rwanda might lead to optics that could damage his company. But throughout the call, Fane Saunders insisted that any asylum seekers that ended up in Rwanda would be looked after well and housed in good quality accommodation. Towards the end of the call, Fane Saunders told our fake businessman that if ever he was in London, he should meet with the Rwandan ambassador, whom he considered a friend. I was going to say that, that if you're interested in Rwanda, hmm. um, I think that um, a person you should meet is the British, um, is the, the Rwandan ambassador in the UK, who I knew when he was in Rwanda. And he is, when we first had dealings with Rwanda, one of the people out there, said to us that he was one of the three most likely successors to the president and he's called Johnson Busingi. Mr Busingi has long been a key figure in the Rwandan regime during a period in which it's been criticised by the US State Department for significant human rights issues. Mr Busingi was Rwanda's Minister for Justice before he became High Commissioner in London and his appointment led to some British MPs calling for him to be subject to sanctions over the role he allegedly played in the controversial abduction and trial of Paul Rusesa Begina, the opposition figure made famous in the film Hotel Rwanda. Mr Basingi was in charge of Rwanda's prison and police services during the period when Rusesa Begina alleges he was tortured and denied medical treatment. So we decided to arrange a pretend stopover in London and ask Fane Saunders if he could fix up a meeting with Mr Basingye. The next day, we had our answer, and lunch was booked with the ambassador at an exclusive gentleman's club in central London. Our fake businessman met the ambassador and Fane Saunders in mid-August here at the Travellers Club, and we switched on our secret camera. Over a long lunch, the ambassador stressed how the country had stamped out corruption and was an excellent place for investment. He told our fake businessman how refugees would be welcomed in Rwanda, provided with good housing, employment opportunities and free to move around. The ambassador said he was expecting up to 5,000 asylum seekers from Britain and said Rwanda already had a track record of assimilating refugees. Since the year 2000, maybe 99, 97, 98, we have been open and we have received probably more than three, four hundred thousand refugees from the, from the region, from DRC, from Burundi, from, uh, especially from DRC and from Burundi. They have been coming and we have never closed our doors to, to anybody who wants to come in. Now, the UK already know that even if nobody comes, we are fine. They are already talking to, 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 to other countries. Yeah. And whether it works in the end and whether it doesn't work, it's really none of our concerns. But over the course of the lunch, Mr Basingi made a number of comments that will alarm critics of the UK government's Rwanda plan. The ambassador was dismissive of an incident where Rwandan police shot and killed a number of refugees. Although several people died, Mr Basingi didn't appear too concerned. Ministers have come to Rwanda, uh, they have taken BBC and everybody, they have seen what is going on on the ground. But when they get here, they say, well, there is an incident in 2012 where the police shot 10 refugees. Yes, it might have happened. But so what? Here in the UK, someone is shot every day. And it is on, on BBC and it is everywhere. But they haven't said the UK shoots people. <laughs> That's not what we have said. No. We, we did our prosecutions of the people, we did the investigation, what happened, and so on and so forth. It could have been a mistake. So that is what the media will want to turn Rwanda into. The Badonkis could find no record of a shooting in 2012. 
but in 2018, when Mr. Basinghe was Justice Minister, 12 Congolese refugees were shot and killed by Rwandan police after a protest over food rations. Although there was an investigation, Amnesty says that nobody was charged with the killings and some of the leaders of the refugee protest were jailed. In a ruling the British government is now appealing, the UK Court of Appeal said the Rwanda plan was unlawful, as there is a real risk that refugees could be sent back to their home country. When asked about this, the ambassador said such an event was unlikely, but he did not rule it out completely. I mean, how, why would it happen? Even if it happened, in the unlikely event that it happened, how many times would it happen? Under broad daylight, in, in, in broad daylight, we had a, a, a double British and Rwandan uh, uh, supervision, supervisory committee, very independent, appointed by the British government, appointed by the Rwandan government. How would that happen and even consistently happen? Mm -hmm. Secondly, what would, what would be the interest? When Mr. Basingi was appointed High Commissioner in London, the Lantos Foundation, a prominent human rights body in the US, claimed Mr. Basingi played a significant role in grave human rights violations in relation to the extraordinary rendition and kidnapping of opposition figure Paul Rusesa Begina. They said at the time Mr. Basingi served as Rwanda's Minister of Justice, the agency which oversaw Rusesa Begina's capture, imprisonment and subsequent sham trial. Our fake businessman asked the ambassador about Rusesa Begina. In the end, it became a very unfortunate situation. Uh, you know, the, the, the man was able to mobilize and uh, start up a political thing and start up a rebel army and, uh, and uh, position it in place. And they attacked Rwanda and killed people. And, you know, one thing led to another until he was arrested and tried. Rusesa Begina's supporters strongly refute the claims of the regime. The ambassador denied Rusesa Begina was kidnapped, but described how he was arrested. The flight had a stopover, his, his, his flight had a stopover in Kigali, they welcomed were. by <laughs> our intelligence, uh, our, our, My our criminal uh, investigation department, criminal intelligence and investigation department, and. The look and on his face must have been just... And they told him, this, you are in Rwanda. <laughs> and he's like, no, I can't be in Rwanda. He said, what? Rusesa Begina was jailed for 25 years after what Mr. Basingi and Fein Saunders claim was a fair trial. In March, Rusesa Begina was released from prison after President Kagame pardoned him and he flew back to the US. The ambassador showed no regret about how Rusesa Begina was captured and even suggested the regime would do it again. But what's to keep him from doing this again with the... Uh, I don't know. credibility. Like with the rebel, to, to get another rebel army or... Can he do it again or... Well, I don't know. Maybe, 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 but his plane would again land in Kigali. <laughs> <laughs> the lunch guests moved to another room to have coffee and the ambassador was asked what he would say to the British Prime Minister or Home Secretary about its migrant policy. So what would you, in this case, what would you tell the UK what to do in terms of this whole migrant policy? What would you say to them, I would say that to the Prime Minister or to the Home Minister? What would you say to I them? I would tell them that they are doing it that absolutely wrong. They're doing it, they should have a long-term idea. They should have a long-term policy of making it a choice for people not to risk their lives coming to the UK. Because right now, many people are not coming here because of war in their country. No. They're coming here because they, they are hopeless. They're coming here because they have no, no future. The future is absolutely insecure. The lunch came to an end and the ambassador offered our fake businessman a lift back in his official car. Whilst the radio played, he was asked about the Home Office run by Suella Braverman. Let me ask you this, what do you think of the Home Ministry here? What do you think of the Home Ministry here? Braverman. You want me to tell you anything? Yes. You won't tell you to anybody? <laughs> <laughs> I think they could do better. 
Despite his country being a key partner in the British government's flagship immigration policy, the ambassador went on to launch an attack on the UK's image of itself as a compassionate country. He was asked why did Rwanda agree to help the British with their refugee plan? Was it a business deal? It's not a business deal. It's, it's a totally a different matter. We, 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 we don't... You see, when people come here... Yeah. Let me put it the other way. We are not a very proud lot to see people in 2023 still willing to die in order to come here. And even if we are not doing anything else, we would still be opposed to it. We would still say it's, it's indecent, it's immoral, that, that there is someone in any part of the world still willing to die to come here. And it's still as immoral for these countries to still see themselves as the, as the refuge country, the solace country, the protection country, the compassion country. They enslaved millions of people for 400 years. They destroyed India. They destroyed China. So, they destroyed Africa. So, compassion is politics. I sit here and I watch it. Compassion in this country is politics. There's no compassion here. Unprompted, the ambassador went on to make comments that will concern those critics of the Rwandan plan who fear how LGBTQ refugees might be treated. Although homosexuality is not illegal in Rwanda, changing gender is, and campaign groups have criticized the country for its ill treatment of LGBTQ people. Yes. Why are we dramatizing? Why are we doing with that? Yes. Yes. Why are we dramatizing? Mm. Beyond there's so now a bigger problem, bigger than COVID, bigger than underdevelopment. Yes. Why? Yes. Why? Yes, if there could be, if there are scientifically people who are like that, yes. it's, it's not fueled. It's not fueled by, by here. The debate right now is bizarre. Mm. Uh, we hear the most he go to schools of young children, to serve until under age classrooms, under age classes, 10, 13, 12 years mm. old, and they are busy telling them how this whole male and female gender is a lie. Yes. It doesn't exist. You can be anything. The future is in, in knowledge. Mm. is in, in, in science and technology, is in, in, in medicine and health, is in uh, education, is in uh, environmental protection, is in, uh, you know, respect of people, dignity, the pe people's dignity, fairness, making sure what you are dealing with others is fair, you are not waiting to exploit people, mm. prospecting people's rights, and also defining those rights and, and trying to be sure that the rights you are, you are talking about are not LGBTQ, you know, drama. Let's keep in touch. Okay, wonderful. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to right. you soon. Thank you for the drive. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Ministers hope the government's Rwanda plan could be the centerpiece of its campaign in the coming general election. In a matter of days, the Supreme Court will hear the government's appeal after the plan had been judged illegal. We will soon find out if Suella Braverman will achieve her dream. In a statement to led by Donkeys, Chelgate's chairman, Terence Fane Saunders, said, Chelgate does not represent the Rwandan government in any capacity, nor did we do so when this meeting took place. I do not speak on the Rwanda government's behalf, and any comments I made in the course of the lunch meeting to which you refer were made informally and in a wholly private capacity. There is no public interest in informal comments. I have no further comment to make. In a statement to Led by Donkers, the High Commissioner, Mr Basungi, said, Mr Fane Saunders' comments carry no weight and should be disregarded. Mr Bashingi said the 2018 shooting of refugees was a tragedy and an isolated incident that was fully investigated and that lessons have been learned. 
He said no one will be forced to return to their country of origin. Mr Basingi said Paul Rusesa Begina was legally brought to Rwanda. On the UK's migrant policy, he said there is nothing compassionate about allowing the current situation where countless people are paying criminal human smugglers and dying while making dangerous journeys across the channel. He said everyone, including LGBTQ people, will feel safe and valued in Rwanda and added that he's proud to work alongside the Home Secretary.